Hey guys, and welcome back to our coverage of the Sega Master System and Game Gear games. That was horribly bit crushed, compressed the hell and back, but uh, <laughs> oh well, this is... Everything about this is just weird, like you've got pink knuckles, the Chaos samples don't look right, the graphics are uh, a bit odd, there's no Master System version of Triple Trouble. Flame, you're gonna have to take it from here, I'm feeling a bit mind fucked right now. What the <laughs> hell is going on?! <laughs> <laughs> yes, so Sonic Triple Trouble is a Game Gear exclusive, uh, as Tom said. There is actually an unofficial Master System version out there, which Snake played during the Sonic Fun, if I recall yes, correctly. That's one that was sort of put together by one of these scenes from Sonic Retro called Glitch. And it plays pretty similarly, but I thought, you know, we'll just use official things. So I might be bending the rules a little bit when we get to Blast, but I'll talk about that when we get to it. <laughs> this one does actually take full advantage of the fact that the Game Gear has a slightly wider colour palette. Ooh. You can see, like, this looks a lot more detailed than we saw from the other three games that we've covered so far. And that's because it was developed, like, natively for the Game Gear, rather than being a Master System game ported across... This was one of the like only Sonic games I'd say back in the day that I never got a chance to play myself because uh, I opted for the Game Boy. You know, the system that you didn't need 10 hundred billion AAA batteries to play for more than 10 minutes. Yeah, and to be fair, like the Game Gear, had, the Game Boy had a much stronger library of games, so you probably got the better choice there. <laughs> Also, can I just say that uh, Sonic's legs are really long in this game from lots of things. Like, it's throwing me off. I mean, his spines are also freaking me the hell out. This is just, this is one of the most ugly, well, the ugliest Sonic sprites I think I've ever seen. Wait till blast. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, oh, you, God. You ain't seen nothing yet, Rich. So, Flame, explain to me why we're in this fucking Susian nightmare here. I assume this is, like, the game's special stage. It is. This game has two different types of special stages that we'll see. Some of them are like this, some of them are a different type, which we will see next one. Uh, they are very bizarre. They are not exactly that exciting. These ones, at least. Like, the other ones are quite fun, but... Ah. This, it's just like another level, except not exciting, and there's a lot of... These jumps are really annoying to make without being bounced all over the place, by the way. But this is pretty much how the uh, Chaos symbols work. There's like with the other games that we've played up to this point, 2 and Chaos, there are five that you need to find in the game. And yes, here is our good friend Fang the Sniper, who is going to basically be a slight annoyance to us when he's not burning himself. <laughs> what a fucking <laughs> tool, Jesus. All right, well, I do kind of like these special stages. You know, they're like platforming challenges in of themselves. I think... Um, in terms of games released around this time, Knuckles Chaotix had it beat in terms of, like, um, wacky Sonic... I don't want to say spin-offs, but alternate games. I wouldn't classify this in, like, the main Sonic canon. Like, we didn't get a Triple Trouble level in Generations or anything. No, God, no. I think that would have been a, probably a really bad idea, because I don't think there's really anybody who really knows anything about Triple Trouble or cares. Well, like, this is... Out of all of these games, this seems like the most technically stable of all of them. Right. I know that might not be saying much given the others like to chug, but <laughs> like, this does have a few like performance issues at times, but nowhere near the lengths of, say, like Sonic 1 or whatever. Let's see, what does the good old Sega wiki have to tell me about the storyline? As usual, as usual, Dr. Robotnik has captured all of the Chaos Emeralds. Unfortunately for him, an accident in the testing phase of his new ultimate weapon, the Atomic Destroyer, scatters the Emeralds back across the island. While Sonic and Tails are out to retrieve them, they are cut short by Knuckles the Echidna. Robotnik has already reclaimed the Yellow Emerald, and he's duped the Iron Guardian again, I guess, into believing Sonic and Tails are out to steal the stones. Meanwhile, a sneaky treasure hunter named Knack the Weasel, Fang the Sniper in the Japanese version, is taking advantage of the commotion to take the emeralds. He does not know of the true power of the emeralds, but he does know the large, pretty gems would fetch a high price on the market. Now it's a mad, free-sided race for the Chaos Emerald. So, uh, it's pretty, like, <laughs> in-depth story-wise for a 2D Sonic game, I would say, outside of Free and Chaos. Well, you're describing Fang there, like, or Knack, or whatever you want to call him. Like, his story is basically rude to the bats, isn't it? Like, he yeah. doesn't know the value of what he's getting, he just wants it for money. Like, 
collect them because they're jewels. But this is the other kind of special stage that you get. I guess it's a bit of a precursor to the Advanced 3 ones. Yeah, I think that was the one on the plane. But yeah, just collect rings, really, <laughs> and like get there. Um, can Sonic stop looking at us? I think he needs to focus on, you know, flying <laughs> his plane. It'd maybe be a bit smarter, if you ask me. It's making me think of, like, that Hugo game with the troll that they used to play on live and kicking and whatnot. Hmm. I don't know what you're talking about, but okay. That's a bit before Richie's time and well before your time, you fucking fetus with uh, a knack for doing commentary. <laughs> uh, knack for doing it would imply I'm good at it. <laughs> well, also, knack wouldn't imply that you were a weasel, and I'm not quite sure that we'd call you that. He's, he's not a weasel, he's only half weasel. I forget what the other half is. Um, I don't know, but this could end up getting quite awkward. <laughs> okay, dude, you okay there? Oh, shit! Uh, I, bye! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they sort of play him up for comic relief a little bit. Your mileage may vary on how well it works, but yeah, I'm okay with it. A little bit of character to him. Yeah, this thing is stupid, and this precursor to another advanced thing. Like, think of was it the secret base boss from Advance One? Yes, yeah. Though he doesn't quite go off screen like Eggman does in that game. Ah, oh, shame, really shame. There you go. Although I have to say, this is I'm liking Fang the Sniper slash Knack the Weasel's. Um, Character development a little bit more than, um, say, uh, Knuckles is in SA3 and 3K. Yeah. Because he seems to have a lot more character. Because Knuckles in that game basically just stood and laughed and kind of hit a button for what I remember most of what he did in that game. And it's only really been games after that point where Knuckles actually began to develop a character. Whereas already Knack has sort of clearly got a character in this and he's much more engaging I feel. I'm trying to think, the other games that he was in, like, I know he was in Fighters and like I don't remember how he played because in Fighters I just pick Sonic, like Sonic's my main in that and I just spin dash to win because literally the game is built in a way that you can do that. You know, most balanced fighting game of all time. He was in this, was he in anything else? He might have been in Drift 2, but I'm not 100% sure on that. What a hazard a guess and say yes, he was in the Drift games, but I knew him mostly from uh, Sonic the Comic, the UK Fleetway comic, where he was actually part of the Chaotix crew until he, like, defected. He betrayed them, essentially, and went to work for the uh, the Brotherhood of Metalics, or Metallics, or Metal Sonics, if you prefer. Hmm, so, like, I'm completely okay. out of touch with the comics, so i got nothing there, but yeah, go on, Rich. So, um, game appearances for Fang the Sniper slash Nag the Weasel are Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble, Sonic Drift 2, he has a cameo in Tails Adventure, he is in Sonic the Fighters, he has a cameo in Sonic Jam, he has a cameo in Sonic Mega Collection, Huh. apparently he's in Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut. Well, they probably count in that as the Game Gear games being on it, to be fair. Probably. And then he um, also has a cameo in Sonic Mega Collection Plus. Apparently has one in Sonic and the Black Knight. Um, apparently has a cameo in Sonic Generations, which might be... That was one of the posts, wasn't it? Yeah, they, they've got to be including artwork and like other assets at this point. Yeah, so really the only ones in which he is a an actual character... Um, would be Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble, Sonic Drift 2, and Sonic the Fighters. There you go. So, yeah, so only three games, but still. Oh, I found my answer to what, uh, like, breeds of animal Fang is like, by yes. the way. In Japan, Fang is half wolf and half Jaboa. However, when Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble was localized for North American and European releases, he was renamed Knack the Weasel. In all subsequent video game appearances, he is called Fang, regardless of region. In his Sonic Generations Wanted poster cameo, both names are used, reading Knack the Weasel, aka Fang the Sniper. The former official Sonic Central website described the character as a wolf-weasel hybrid, and they were wrong. Dead wrong! Does it say it in that wording on your little wiki page there? <laughs> no, 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 I just kind of, I kind of embellished that, honestly. Yeah, but I have to say, uh, calling him a Jaboa is actually more accurate, because that does look very much more like what he actually is. Because um, basically it's a hopping desert rodent. 
and it's actually quite cute. And also actually really fast. Yeah, that's how he attacks in um, Mania when uh, Egg Magician, or whatever the name is, takes the form of Fang. He bounces the bat and shoots his little pot pistol. But yeah, cause, so Jaboas can run up to 24 kilometers per hour, which is about 50 miles per hour, which for a tiny little thing is terrifyingly quick. Yeah. Well, I mean, look who we're looking at on the screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one fast boy is not often allowed to go fast. <laughs> but he does have the super peel out here from Sonic CD, so you can build up speed with that. For some reason, yeah, let's have a look at the gameplay side of the wiki, see if that can tell me anything here. Uh, do, 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 do. This is the first Sonic game in which the player does not lose all of his rings after getting hurt. Ooh. In this specific case, during any act of zone 1, 2 or 6, or the first act of any other zone, each hit will take away 30 rings. In the second act of zone 3, 4 or 5, 50 rings will be lost. Sonic has the ability to do the strike dash slash super peel out as he does in Sonic Chaos that gives him a speed burst and temporary invincibility. Neat. See, that's weird because the temporary invincibility is what was different about the peel out in CD. Because it would be that you can either, like, spin dash, which was slower in that game, but you took out the enemies in front of you, or the peel out, which was faster, but you were vulnerable. So the fact that they gave that to the peel out is kind of bizarre. Uh, well. Well, this level's kind of pretty, so we can look at that before I confuse myself more. <laughs> That was well worth it. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. Uh, I do kind of like the Sunset Park aesthetic. It, just like the sundown sort of look. It's just kind of cool to look at. We all know what we've come here to hear and to discuss. And that is, of course, the music for Sunset Park Act 2. Or maybe Act 3. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. What? Oh, okay, that was a bit of a, an abrupt start to the level. And then he just chucked us off, it rammed us into a wall. I know, what a dick of a platform. Well, it's no different really to, like, say, an ice cap where you start off on the board and then you just sort of crash and lose it. True, true, I guess. See, these floors can be applied to your favourite game as well. <laughs> Was the flip motion in Chaos, these rocket shoes thing, or is this entirely new to Triple Trouble? I think the animation's more detailed here. Okay. Like, that's the case with a lot of this, like, the art's more detailed, the animation's more detailed, but it kind of was the increase in production value, because this is kind of like a spiritual sequel to Chaos in a way, because I believe in terms of their Japanese names, Chaos is called Sonic and Tails. And this is called Sonic and Tails 2. There you go then. So it's kind of meant to follow on and be like an enhancement. And I think the sky disappeared. <laughs> yes, it's looking slightly terrifyingly dark right now. I think Sonic's very likely to crash. You mean we're not flying through space right now? Yeah, well, Sonic can breathe in space, but still. It might be space, actually. It could be stars going past. <laughs> Depends how close we are to shit. So how many how many um, rings do you actually need to get in this section to uh, progress to the knack boss fight, Flo? I believe it's 80. We'll see. <laughs> what an odd number. I prefer like either 50 or 100, honestly. Yeah. Mm, I know, but whatever. <laughs> whatever indeed. Yep, it's 80. So is it pretty much consistently 80 throughout the entire game? Well, given they're the only two plain special stages, oh, yeah. Oh, so yes, yeah, so definitely. Because it was 80 on the last one. <laughs> 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 Alright, what's he got this time? Oh, it's a, it's another floating thing on my bar. But it's not quite the egomatic, but I'll live. He's got rockets, he's dangerous enough. Are we actually doing damage to him? Sorry, I can't not address this. The background looks like it came directly out of a transparency layer for Sony Vegas. Yes. Yeah, either that or Photoshop or something. Like, it literally is that checkerboard pattern in it. <laughs> Beautiful. The Grey Emerald, known as the Control Emerald in the STC canon. I'm not sure why. They just had to put their own spin on it, which I enjoyed. Nice. The Grey ones just had the positive energy sucked out of it, you know. <laughs> Not sure how I feel about that side of the law, but yeah. That's closer to the official law than your fucking comic series will be. <laughs> oh, well, I don't want to hear your propaganda, Jesus. 
it's not my fault that I grew up with the actual official material. <laughs> yeah, well, you also grew up during the uh, the era of the friggin' Archie comics and Ken Penders and whatnot, so... Uh, yeah, but he's uh, one of my favourite people to fuck with, so who cares? It works out. <laughs> oh, oh, the music! Oh, it's good! That's less energetic than I remember it being. I must have embellished it in my mind, to be honest. Well, to me, it's the level theme that's more exciting than this thing. But yeah, it is a run-along thing. It's kind of a guessing game as to where you want to jump to hit the enemies along the way that we just saw. But you know, other than that, it's not much to it. So it's just like it's just a train yard level, really. Basically, yeah. Neat. Come on, we got the point now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have gameplay experience with uh, Sonic One, Two, and Chaos, and uh, a bit of Blast. Did I complete Triple Trouble? I'm having trouble remembering, honestly. That's why I'm faltering a bit, commentary was. I don't know if you've beat it. I know you've played it when you were meant to be streaming something else and you kept getting distracted. Hmm, yeah, that's true. Oh, right, yeah, I was doing a marathon <laughs> of um, Sonic 06 and Unleashed and I was playing Triple Trouble during breaks and whatnot. Yeah, the most riveting livestream content. Let's talk about a game that the viewers can't see. <laughs> I'll shut up. Uh. All right, what's up next besides this? Next up is a level that kind of feels like they didn't translate it properly. Let's have a look here. Meta Junglera. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this feels like it's meant to be like Metal Jungle or some shit like that, but like, it just didn't translate it properly or a mistranslation or some shit like that. Oh well, it's another jungle level in uh, an 8-bit Sonic game. I'm not going to complain. Do you seem to really like their jungle levels in uh, these 8-bit Sonic games, don't they? Because I think we've had one in every single one, and in the grand scheme of things, I don't think the sort of main line Sonic games have had all too many jungle levels in them. They've had a few, but you, you kind of bread and butter has been your green plain um, Sonic level. In terms of the classics, at least, like, I suppose we had like Aquatic Ruin and whatever the one that looks like it in Fring K was, and. I suppose the removed uh, wood zone would have been a jungle level from Sonic 2. Or a wood, which is different from a jungle, I think you'll find. Look at here, this right now. There is wood everywhere. <laughs> fair enough, mate, fair enough. But it's also called Junglyra, so it's not exactly a jungle, is it? <sighs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making your work easy on this almost hour-long part, am I? <laughs> no, you're really not. <laughs> uh. But yeah, that was one where I just sort of went back on myself a little bit, just because you do have to have 50 rings when you hit that thing for it to whoop you to the special stage. So, again, that's my excuse for wandering aimlessly in the level, I will stick by it. <laughs> fair dues, mate, fair dues. The music's kind of unsettling in these sections, it doesn't help that we're on a time limit here. Also, it doesn't help that this looks oddly barren. It's like, there's enough detail to the sprite work that it looks complete, but it's also the actual, like, setting of the place feels very empty and lonely. Yeah. So it's kind of, like, little contrary, like, contrasting a little bit, subverting expectations, I guess, and that kind of can be a little bit off. Please don't use the phrase subverting expectations. It has been ruined for me, thank you very much. By who? Well, you're the one who reads all your fucking, like, Tumblr analysis bollocks. Whatever. Whatever, okay? <laughs> don't, don't judge me by what you read on the internet, that's not fair. I can judge you by the stuff you get irrationally angry about. Oh no, someone on Tumblr didn't like my little children's cartoon. I'm talking um... about Star Wars or Ryan Johnson, you asshole! <laughs> yeah, well I'm talking about the stuff that I see more often and pay more attention to. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You fair weather stalker. That's what you are. Yeah, I'm sorry. I stalk the stuff that is fun to laugh at. <laughs> I ignore the stuff that is boring. That is uh, how I work. What a positive, <laughs> positive reinforcement of a really creepy behaviour. How bizarre. Yeah. I, I'm assuming, like, if you lose at this bit, you have to do the stage all over again because it seems like a, 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 like a bottomless pit, like over a, or under a bridge sort of situation. I think so. Mm. Oh my god, he's actually getting serious now. You can't jump directly up anymore, can you, fucker? <laughs> no, we have to jump slightly from the side. <laughs> That's so much harder. 
Okay, Toad, we're doing more damage to you when you're in the air than when you try to attack us. Uh, I like to imagine that in like the beta version of the game, he swore all the time, and then he just took that out for the final release. See, he's mouthing expletives now, but we just can't hear him. Yeah, he's just going, fuck, fuck, shit, shit, balls, crap. <laughs> <laughs> that, that explains the constant beeping in the soundtrack. <laughs> How many fucking hits does he need? Look at this shit. This is true, but uh, now I, I can't take him seriously at all because all I'm looking at when I'm seeing him is just him going, What the fuck are you doing? Stop hitting my head, stop hitting my head, you <laughs> fucking bastard. I think it was enough when you hit him the first time. Like, just bury his uh, not egomatic into the ground. You don't need to give him a, like, a, a buried alive scenario. <laughs> I know, but, like, why not just rub it in a bit? <laughs> so I'm slightly fucked up. It's fine. <laughs> Sonic got Chaos Emeralds. Did it still say that when we only had one of them? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, it wouldn't be it. Whoa, what the hell was happening there? <laughs> that, was a, yeah. that was a graphical glitch and a half. I say it's more technically sound, but occasionally you do get your little derps like that. If it's, a ge it's a Game Gear game at the end of the day. I ain't expecting perfection. Okay, look at this collision chaos bollocks we got here. Also, it's a Sonic game. You can never expect perfection with a Sonic game. You've not played the majority of 2D games. You don't get to join in on this conversation, Richie. <laughs> I do get to join in in this conversation, because even though I haven't played the 2D games, I have played most of the 3D ones at this point, so... It's a pretty consistent thing throughout the entire franchise, really. I, I will accept that. For now. Begrudgingly. <laughs> but please, play some 2D games. You always feel, like, left out in our conversations during these 2D game playthroughs. Yeah, well, I'm really busy, so it's kind of not going to happen. If you have time to do two to three recording sessions with me a week, and by the way, I need three next week, I just want to tell you live <laughs> when we record this, you can play a 2D Sonic game to completion. Yeah, no, I can't, because, you see, I'm doing the two to three recording sessions with you, so... Kinda takes away a lot of the time. We know, really, this is trying to make us feel less bad for just plonking you in front of all these Sonic games and asking you to humour us for a few hours here and there. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. We're still in Mag Magically, right? So when you eventually suffer your way through Sonic Chronicles and then make us suffer through them, I will be able to talk then, because I have played that one, unfortunately. How about you, Flame? Have you done time in the Dark Brotherhood? Uh, what, can, what should I say here to get the least work? <laughs> uh, well, yes. Oh, good. You'll be great with commentary then. No? Ah, you'll be great with Vance then. Yeah. I mean, really... Well, I haven't played it, but... <laughs> well, you see, that's going to work out quite well, because then you can, you know, be traumatised along with us, whilst Tom and I just go, well, for the love of God, why did this thing have to exist? Yeah, I'll try and get around to it before we do the actual run, just because I'm not... I've never been a fan of, like, the whole going in and talking over things blind, because you might notice, even when I know the games, I don't really have much to bring to the table, so when I'm just blindly staring at stuff, like, that could not that work too well. I'm going to be honest, I find Triple Trouble technically, like, superior to the other games as it is, with neat bits here and there. I find it a bit boring compared to the others. Maybe it's just because I didn't play it growing up, so I don't have that nostalgia binding me, refusing to let me go, but still. See, the thing is, like, I do kind of get where you're coming from here in that, like, I guess it's because it's, like, it is just a safe, okay mm. sort of game. Like, it doesn't have notable problems, really. It's just, it does what it needs to do. Nothing more, nothing less. Like, I think it's probably, technically speaking, the best of the games that we're covering. But by that same token, it's kind of less interesting. Like, Chaos, as easy and short as it is, is just very charming, and I don't know, it, it gets by on, um, like I said, charm alone, but with Triple Trouble, I mean, it looks great, the soundtrack isn't really anything to write home about, though, and uh, I, I, I will say, I'll, I'll tell you the good points, this is just uh, the Gigalopolis throne boss from Chaos, just in a different direction. It's coming down from above instead of like coming up from the bottom this time. I like the fact you can play as either Sonic or Tails. Uh, I like the uh, the triple threat aspect with Robotnik, Knuckles and uh, Knackle working against you. The special stages are neat, but I don't know, the rest of it is just a fairly standard Sonic game to me. I feel like you did mention about Chaos being like 
you know, short and easy. And I think that is what kind of gives Chaos its charm because, like, yeah. everything was fast moving, wasn't it? We we're never really in a level for too long. Yeah. But it feels like we've been in Magic and Clearer for a little while now, at least relatively speaking, because that is probably about the same length as, like, say, one of the Mega Drive levels would be. Yeah. But I suppose also having them long inside special stages kind of, you know, slows down the pace here as well because, like, they are a little bit bland to look at. Like, the plain ones are fine. You read that right, folks. This is the Robotnik Winter Zone, complete with snowboard. Yes, he he owns Winter now. It's a Robotnik property. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I think I missed that part of uh, The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons, but uh, they actually uh, have a bit of legacy in regards to uh, Robotnik Winter Zone in the Sonic franchise, because I forget whether it's Adventure or Adventure DX, if you hold down a certain button uh, before the Be Cool, Be Wild, Be Groovy section in uh, Ice Cup, you can get the Yellow Triple Troll Award. Ah. Which is a very odd reference from to bring back, but appreciated nonetheless. <laughs> I'm fine with, like, cameos and easter eggs, just make them satisfying, you know? Don't just put a bunch of, like, Sonic's in Ready Player One. That, that's where that spiel was going. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll see, unfortunately, I'm not intellectual enough to understand those kind of things, so... <laughs> I mean, from what I can gather, it's been reviewing quite well, his Ready Player One, but I'm kind of looking at it and just going... No, I'm no, not not hugely feeling it. I, th I think part of it is the Iron Giants just throwing me off and just going, no, do not do that to my poor Iron Giant baby. <laughs> well, yeah, the people who would disagree with your assessment on that would say it's not the Iron Giant, it's just an avatar that someone's inhabiting, using the imagery. Okay, and I do find it hilarious that Warner Brothers didn't really care to... Um advertise and market it when it was out but oh when they could use it in a film for like nostalgia bay oh they're more than happy to plug the iron giant now yeah uh, i don't i hardly follow films at all so i can just go by the memeing for stuff like this <laughs> iron giant i barely know it but anyway robotnik winter zone this is actually a pretty cool level like, i was saying that uh, triple trouble's a bit boring but i got no problem with this one but i do love ice levels in general so yeah, I agree that the ice level is cool, but <laughs> it is quite a fun level to like on its own right, you know, it's kind of pretty to look at, like, I'm not sure how the pink offsetting the blue works for the background, but it just does somehow. I gotta say, it always takes me aback when Flame, like, he goes a bit further than just saying, like, oh, this level looks aesthetically nice and goes into, like, the technical side of what makes it artistically appealing, because I don't expect that level of intelligence from him most of the time. <laughs> A little bit brutal, but um, I, I totally got what you mean, Flame. It's so the whole thing with pink is it's that sort of warm, sort of sunsetty colour. Yeah. And it's because it's that pasteliness of it matches with the pastely blues that you've got of the kind of snow and the ice and stuff, and so it just makes the whole thing look just rather cosy. Yeah, it really um, does. I would say that this is definitely the most interesting level that we've seen so far because the rest of them are just gone yeah this is basically everything that i've seen in a sonic game already and i've just sort of really checked out for the past half hour <laughs> but um that's been the one the level so far that I've maybe got oh that's something a bit new i'm quite interested now well i don't know sunset park was pretty but that was again that was kind of Almost like the oil ocean colour scheme that that had going on. Yeah. So I guess, like you say, it's not really much new to Sonic, but it is kind of like a cool look to it in itself. I, I, I think I might be selling Triple Trouble a little bit short, because from my recollections of playing the game, I think the, uh, the second half of the game is much more interesting than the first. It's back-ended with better ideas uh, than, like... What was it? Giant Turquoise or whatever the hell it was called? Let me look up a level That was list. the first one, yeah. Great was... Turquoise. Ah... Uh, you can tell which of us actually noted down what the levels are called before recording. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Oh my god, it's an auto scroller boss. He barely. Like, he's hardly fucking moving. <laughs> Visual indication of how much health he has left. Interesting. Hmm. Although, really, he's done a pretty cramped job at actually doing any damage because, you know, he's just sort of moved back and forward, back and forward, and just thrown something that's just gone over Sonic's head. Hmm. <laughs> that was because I sort of got the hang of where to position myself for that. Because, like, them penguin things, like, the idea is that it's just something else to have to dodge. And here's Knuckles doing his 3 k animation. 
Man, they, they really love that fire animation from Angel Island Zone, because they've used it in pretty much every level so far. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they have. Alright, next up we have... Tidal Plant Zone. I thought that's a turtle plant for a second, though. <laughs> no, it definitely said Tidal. Okay, I am immediately seeing a bit of Quartz Quadrant, just from the coloration. Quartz Quadrant, but with water. And I believe this is where we get a redux of the Sonic's inside the little bubble trying to get out thing. <laughs> Although, we do also have bombs dropping, so yeah, lovely. Here we go. Oh god, help me! Help me, Jesus! <laughs> let me out, let me out. Interesting. Um... I think I prefer the other sprite. Um, I mean, I prefer the other sprite anyway, because it was a much better one than this. This is sort of terrifying. Um, but the other one just looks a little bit more cute yeah. in terms of dealing with the ball. This just looks like Sonic's just going, um, where the hell am I going? Why do I keep going up? Uh, God. Can stop? I mean... It's no wonder he'd never learned to swim. The poor guy's terrified of war at this point. Yeah. I mean, same, but still. <laughs> See, this one, I don't think the water's hampering the performance too much. Like, there's a noticeable boost in performance when you're out of the water, but, like, it's not completely fucking you over like it was in Labyrinth. Because, mm -hmm. oh my god, that was suffering. I can go on and on and what? for days. And the hell is this? I haven't got a clue, but it's here. Isn't that the thing that, like, Iron Man Morse's armor to in the latest Infinity War trailer? Uh, maybe I didn't necessarily see that specifically, but then to be fair, I was just a little bit preoccupied by uh, Star Lord and Iron Man talking and bantering together, and I just thought that was wonderful. Oh, that sure was Marvel trailer banter, all right. It really was. <laughs> I don't exactly mean that in a completely positive way, but I don't hate it either. Yeah, all I can think of is that Jack's Films video where he did the parody reaction video. That was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I tried to record a, uh, a reaction for the new Infinity War trailer. At the time of recording, it's um, the 17th of March 2018. So, you know, if you're watching this in a few years, enjoy. Woo, we're from the past where life was good and everything. And it, didn't, it didn't come out very well. I think I'm just more suited to more casual reactions like Nintendo Directs and E3 conferences and so on. Well, trailers kind of go by a bit fast to react, really. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of the nature of the base for things. They want to pack as much action in a short period of time. So there's not really much space to talk about shit, you know? <laughs> now that you mention it, I did the Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer reaction in post, so you might have a point there. So, I mean, I'd say part of that is because it's the whole thing of when you're watching something for the first time and trying to commentate over it, it always tends to end a bit badly because it's why there's so many sort of reaction hacks on YouTube at present like because the whole gist of it well um, <laughs> so the whole kind of gist of it is you're watching it but most people's general reaction to the first time seeing something is hmm and they just watch it and then actually talking over the topic you're not actually paying attention to what's completely going on on screen so you're kind of not actually spotting anything properly and you're just getting a little bit confused and nobody's really listening to you at that point because you just ramble and sound like a complete not a lunatic like I'm doing now. Yeah, so basically. It, it, those sort of blind reaction videos don't necessarily always work out unless you've got someone who is really, really, really damn good at doing that sort of thing, but they're pretty hard to come by. So yeah, we're under war again. <laughs> <laughs> That's this level in a nutshell, guys. I hope you enjoy the bubble gameplay. I mean, it's okay, I guess. <laughs> I can't get over the look of dread in Sonic's eyes. <laughs> uh, I am playing Poyo Poyo Tetris right now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so we're just gonna get Tom angry on every fuck sub, really? <laughs> uh, oh, this fucking echo bastard needs to take a chill pill and let me win for the fucking last time! <laughs> Maybe you need to get good. Uh, I mean, I, I would agree, but then, to be fair, it's sort of Tetris, so it's, it's, it's not always gonna be the most pleasant to you. Well, see, I've always been better at Tetris than Poyo. Like, Poyo, I'm not that great with, but like, Tetris, like, I get Tetris. Tetris is very simple, very basic. 
Like, as long as I don't fuck up early on, I can normally keep it going. Mm. But Puyo, it's because it's a more complex game type. There's more stuff you actually have to pay attention to. I feel like that was just a stealth insult on me, for the most part. No, because I don't do stealth, stealth insults. I do... Tom, you fucking suck at Puyo. Yeah, you're, you're not... <laughs> You're not smart enough for subtlety, Flame. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> okay, completely balls that up. I'm paying attention again now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Look, when the switch is there and it's dark and you can just turn around and boot it up from safe mode in an instant, it's really convenient and enticing, okay? How do you think I felt during Odyssey? Uh. Well... What we need to do is, whenever we have recording sessions in future, just take all distractions away from Tom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next time we do like a 3D Sonic game, I'm gonna get the Switch version of Forces and just play that the entire time in secret and see if I can beat it before we finish recording the commentary. <laughs> or maybe you could do your fucking job on the two. <laughs> uh, well, you uh. recorded these, mate. We, you know the rule. He, whoever records the game commentary or footage, rather, is in charge of the commentary. This this is true. That rule that we just decided upon like 30 seconds ago, that one. <laughs> oh yeah, that was the 37th amendment, don't you know? I haven't read past the second, it's fine. <laughs> oh, bless you. Bless you. Oh, please do read past the second, because that's the shit one that really needs dealing with. Oh, Richie, please don't. Please don't. Are we at the end of the level yet? I've run out of things to say about Water Zone. Yeah. Just getting a eventually white Sonic would get a gun. <laughs> or black Sonic would get a gun. <laughs> that's, that's, that's Shadow the Hedgehog, mate. Like, that's your favourite Sonic game. How could you forget such a thing? Also, I said, are we at the end of the level? You completely blanked me. Are you even watch? I know it's Rich coming from me. He would just boot it up fucking Puyo Puyo Tetris on his Switch handheld. But still... Yeah, well, like, the levels aren't that long, so we're either at the start or at the end. <laughs> oh, this is a fucking shit show, and I'm not okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh my god. Knuckles, he looks weird compared to his Sonic and Knuckles fry, I gotta say. He looks gigantic. He does, and he sort of looks like the wrong colour. Well, to that a was, certain degree. That was the original Knuckles colour before they retconned him to being red, because apparently pink was too feminine, even though it was a perfect contrast to Sonic's blue and a bit of subversion in terms of masculinity and whatnot. Tom, it's okay. You don't have to say no homo when you play for NK. <laughs> <laughs> Atomic Destroyer Zone! I love this shit. <laughs> this is fucking metal. This is what I was thinking of when we were going through like the fucking nuclear attack storyline from Chaos. Like, this sounds more like a fucking, like, weapon of mass destruction thing, the Atomic Destroyer. Jesus Christ. It really does. I mean, Eggman goes through some bloody weird phases, doesn't he? <laughs> Seriously, like, he's got this one, he's got the talking to Russia one, like, you know. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know whether that's serious or you just leaked the plot of the upcoming Sonic game. <laughs> Take it as you will. <laughs> I don't have inside the sources. Oh, I would pay so much to have, like, the next Mario Sonic at the Olympics games have Putin as an unlockable character. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, well, unfortunately or fortunately, I think that series might be a little bit dead. Uh, maybe it's just on hiatus. If only because... Oh, is it only on a hiatus? I don't know. I, don't, I, don't, I honestly don't know. I kind of checked out after Winter Olympics um, DS, which uh, we should actually be covering this Christmas. That should be a pretty comfy playthrough. Um, so, yeah, the, I think after Rio, they kind of not really done anything with it, because I think Rio was pretty poorly received, and then they haven't done one for the South Korea Olympics, as far as I'm aware. I suppose we'll see when the next actual Olympics happens, whether they um, end up releasing one, but I think they've kind of realised that pretty much all of the recent ones have been pretty poorly received. Mm. The last decently received one was, I think, Marathonic at the, um... Oh god, which... The Vancouver Winter Olympics, so the, the original Olympic Winter Games. Uh, the game. Wii one, yeah. The Wii one, yeah. I think that was the last well-received one and all the rest have kind of gone downhill since. Well, you're speaking of, like, reception in terms of sales, because I don't think they've ever been, like, hugely well-received just in terms of... I mean, critically, I mean, they never were anyway, but I think the first one was sort of, there was a, the novelty of it. Yeah. Um, then 
the Olympic Winter Games came out and everyone was just like, actually this is an alright game, like gameplay wise it was pretty decent. Then uh, 2012 Olympics came out and I think people were just like, well it's a bit better than the original Olympics, but not great. And then it just sort of nosedived after that. Uh -huh. So, it's not been a great one, but like... They sort of hit a, a decent run with the original Olympic Winter Games and then just died after that. Mm. That's a shame, but uh, you know, the faster that series dies, the quicker we can never get a Sonic and Mario crossover platformer. <laughs> I'm just I'm just disappointed if we didn't get to see Mario and Sonic go to South Korea, that could have been some fans. <laughs> uh, North Korea would have been better, mate. Again, Kim Jong-il as an unlockable character. Oh, oh yeah, that would have been fun. <laughs> uh. Although, wait a minute, isn't the next Olympics Tokyo? Oh, is Sonic gonna finally become anime? Sonic was always anime. He's a Japanese creation, you imbecile. Yes, but he's not strictly anime outside of the actual anime series. Have you never watched Sonic X? Like when they get to the Dark Metarex saga or whatever. That shit's anime as fuck, mate. That's what I said, the actual anime series. Okay. Even though most of the <laughs> animation was outsourced and they seem to outsource it to a different studio every fucking episode and that's why the quality is so <laughs> inconsistent. Oh, that's a load. What? Um, what's going on? Fuck no, it's just blank sign. <laughs> what, an, what a random easter egg, okay. <laughs> I don't know what was going on there. <laughs> oh, God knows. Your time is a hundred, as is your rings. Yeah, I got exactly 100 times. That's a unit I understand. <laughs> Wonderful. Alright, let's see what kind of boss we're working with in Atomic Destroyer Zone. It better blow my balls off, because I'm expecting great things. We'll see when I can remember where it is. <laughs> well, well, that just uh, that just heightens the suspense, really, when you can't blow it out randomly. Mm, okay. Yeah, but we got the rocket. Oh! Oh my God, Metal Sonic! I completely forgot he was in this game. Oh. <laughs> He's here for doing something. He's chasing us. Oh, he was just here to you know hit the blooming rocket, stop that from flying. Great, good job. Oh, he is a actual boss fight. All right, oh. It's kind of a cool intro to the boss fight. Like, that can go on for as long as you feel like, I suppose, right, Flame? Well, that, I don't know. I think he does, like, it is automated that he catches up to you. So, like, that's just when it decides to take over. It's just a way for him to, like, introduce him, and then he does his sort of swooping attack. And this is a bit more difficult than I'm making it look here, because, like, you can't always tell, and because, like, the screen's quite small, you don't really get much time to react to him. I've noticed a running theme in these, like, 8-bit games, like, you don't get rings during, like, boss stages for some reason. I guess to heighten the difficulty, because the game's so short. Yeah, it probably is. Although, saying that, the main difficulty you have is beating it before the battery runs out. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I don't want to drag it out too long. <laughs> some say the origin of the speedrun was to actually finish a single game before the game gear needed new batteries. <laughs> yeah. I swear, I'm blowing all of my allowance on batteries for the game. <laughs> Alright, what else we got here? There has to be more in Atomic... De oh, Jesus, we just vaporised. <laughs> it's not vaporisation, it's a teleporter, which may work from vaporisation. <laughs> if you follow Star Trek logic, every time you step into a teleporter, the original you is dead. Well, it's a good thing I don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that fucking expression, man, that's beautiful. <laughs> oh. 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 It's what a is... stompy thing. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, what is this thing? Is this it? Is this how you defeat him? Uh, it's how I ended up defeating that phase of him. Oh, okay, it's a multi phase boss fight. I've oh, got Shades of Sonic 4 Episode 1, but with original bosses. What is it with everyone in their flying machines looking bloody gigantic? They didn't really know how to do perspective while still making the character stand out in like, a small resolution. Well, don't forget, yeah, yeah, we're uh, watching this on a much higher resolution than you'd actually be playing it, so... No, I thought the original Game Gear ran at 1440p. Although <laughs> <laughs> well, you, rendering these at, like, 4K or some shit, it's completely not needed. Well, it... Because of the way I upscale it, it does make it look much better than it would otherwise. Okay. That's the trick with pixel art games. If you like, upscale them with a nearest neighbour filter, they just 
constantly, like you get infinite levels. Like it's only because I don't have the encoder to go up to 8K that I didn't. <laughs> Knowing you, you'll do it one day, my friend. That final phase of uh, the previous fight is a bit annoying, honestly. But this one's not too bad, so long as you stay out of the way of the laser balls. And uh, he's slowing down, so I guess we're coming to uh, the end of Sonic Triple Trouble now. It's been a bit of a shit show commentary-wise, but I've enjoyed revisiting this game again. It's not a bad game at all. Like the bad game's coming tomorrow, but um, <laughs> yeah, I, I find it I find it a bit boring. Honestly, I do like the story aspects. I like Knack the Weasel's inclusion. Uh, Knuckles is here, I guess. Uh, the second half of the game is much more fun than the first, and the Chaos Emerald uh, collection aspect is interesting. But uh, yeah, that's Sonic Triple Trouble, guys. So uh, I guess. Uh, Oh no, I think we've got a few more minutes. I've completely timed this wrong. Oh no! Oh no! What's next, Flame? <laughs> we have Knuckles in a cage for some reason. It's a precursor to Secret Rings. <laughs> oh. Oh, they're friends. Can't wait for you to fall to Eggman's tricks again. Yeah. Join us the next game where Knuckles does the same damn thing. What's next then? Is there like a secret level that you can only get by getting all the Chaos Emeralds? Uh, credits? <laughs> I think. <laughs> Yep, credits. <laughs> what the hell does Sonic look like there? Oh my god. <laughs> How many fucking spines has he got? He looks like he's got spines coming out of his back. <laughs> well, he looks like an actual hedgehog there. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Plane flying dot Jeff. All right, guys, we're going to leave it there. Sonic Triple Trouble. Not a bad game. I just find it to be a technically sound, visually really appealing one with a, a kind of boring set of levels in the first half of the game. But the end game, or at least the second half of the game is pretty decent. Join us tomorrow when we take a look at the last game of this little Mass System Game Gear showcase, Sonic Blast. No, not 3D's Blast, not even Flicky's Island. Sonic Blast. See you then. <laughs>